Is it possible to make a $600 million mega yacht carbon neutral? Measuring 119 meters, carrying 44 crew members, and weighing in at 7,200 tons, this mega yacht could be a titan of carbon emissions. However, underneath its luxury exterior, it's powered entirely by hydrogen, making it the first of its kind to run on clean energy. If you're sick of the constant negativity of the news, then you have found the right channel. Here, we celebrate all the positive stories that don't get the same attention. From a breakthrough treatment for asthma to more than 80 million hectares of American land now under environmental protection. I'm your host, Regis, and join me as we count down seven of the best good news stories from all around the world. Our first story comes from the medical world, where a new suitcase-sized device can now detect tuberculosis in just a few minutes. The most deadly infectious disease right now is tuberculosis, an infection that most often attacks the lungs and takes the lives of 1.3 million people each year. The most tragic part is that it's completely curable. However, one of the biggest problems is detecting it in the first place. Usually an x-ray is needed, which can take days to come back, depending on the person's access to healthcare. Now, with the help of artificial intelligence, diagnosing the disease has become much easier. A program combining x-ray technology with the pattern detection power of AI has been proven to give a positive or negative reading within just a couple of minutes. Using this method, hundreds or even thousands more tests can be processed in exactly the same amount of time. The best part is the equipment is portable enough to fit inside a suitcase, making it accessible in more remote areas. In the Philippines, where a tuberculosis epidemic is gripping the nation, the technology is already being rolled out. There, the disease is one of the leading causes of death in the country, accounting for one in every 35 deaths. The new x-ray device will allow villages and small towns to get tested for the first time. Often, the hardest people to diagnose are poor remote populations, making the technology a game-changer in the fight against tuberculosis worldwide. Equipped with this new suitcase-sized diagnosing tool, the global health community is hoping to send it packing once and for all. Tuberculosis isn't the only lung-based disease that medicine is improving against, as there's finally a new possibility for treating asthma. Asthma is a common lung condition where the airways are narrowed and inflamed, making breathing difficult. Globally, over 300 million people suffer from asthma, including me. While most experience relatively mild symptoms, for some it can be fatal, especially in children. There's still no known cure for the disease, and even worse, almost one-third of the people have asthma that isn't responsive to most treatments, leaving them vulnerable to serious asthma attacks, which can be deadly. A revolution could be on the horizon, though, with new research coming out of King's College London that's changing the way scientists think about and treat asthma. In a recently published paper, researchers investigated how asthmatic inflammation damages the airway linings and makes the body more vulnerable to future attacks. Since inflammation is the most obvious symptom, it's the only one treated, usually with inhalers containing medications like steroids and things like that. However, the root cause, identified as something called epithelial cell extrusion, hasn't been addressed directly. One of these causes is that cells lining the airways, which are usually your body's best defense against harmful invaders of the lungs, are squeezed out and killed when the airways contract during an asthma attack. The study experimented with a chemical called gadolinium, a type of metal used in MRI scans to block this process of cell exclusion. They found that the chemical worked in mice and prevented their airways from becoming inflamed during an asthma attack, making them less likely to have another attack in the future. The next step is to have the treatment approved for testing on humans, which could potentially help millions of asthmatics around the world breathe a little easier. For our next story, we move away from the medical world and deep underwater to the bottom of the ocean, where Greece has announced a historic ban on a harmful kind of fishing. Every year, tens of thousands of vessels use a process called bottom trawling. It's a fishing method that drags large nets across the ocean floor, often with destructive elements like metal plates and chains. While it's an easy and effective way to catch fish, the environmental impact can be devastating. In total, all bottom trawling vessels together operate on almost 5 million square kilometers each year, or roughly 1.3% of the ocean. With each sweep, the metal and chains break into the seafloor, damaging coral and other marine life. And one of the worst parts is that pieces of sediment break loose and release vast amounts of carbon dioxide into the water. 
Fortunately, countries are starting to take action, with Greece at the forefront of legislation that's truly ground-saving. As a country famous for its nature, seafood, and marine life, Greece has felt firsthand the effects of bottom trawling. That's why the government recently announced a ban on the practice in three of its biggest marine parks, one of which is located inside the East Mediterranean Sea. The restrictions will come into effect by 2026 and will later be widened to include any protected waters by the end of the decade. It'll make Greece the first country in Europe to set bottom trawling prohibitions. Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis has already committed $850 million to the effort, stamping Greece's mark on the environmental efforts to save the oceans. More than 10,000 kilometers away, another environmental win is being celebrated in Peru, where victims of a chemical leak have finally been compensated. For decades, the town of La Arroya, located in southwestern Peru, has been an environmental disaster waiting to happen. Since industrial plants were built beginning in the 1920s, arsenic, lead, and other deadly chemicals have been released into the environment, affecting at least 80 people over multiple generations. The people of La Arroya, despite being ignored by the Peruvian government, took their matter to court in 2002. Regardless of the stumbling blocks along the way, more than 20 years later, the Inter-American Court of Human Rights has finally ruled in their favor. The chemical plant was ordered to pay between $30,000 and $60,000 to any victims of poisoning over the years. The court also found that the Peruvian government failed to protect its people and ordered the government to tighten environmental regulations. That will mean going forward, regular reports will be compiled on the quality of water, air, and soil, while an investigation will continue to track down the businesses responsible for the catastrophe. They probably should have been doing that from the beginning, but better late than never, I guess? In the northern part of the Americas, a bold move against the United States government could be the key to saving the environment. According to new legislation, the U.S. is dedicating over 990,000 square kilometers to conservation and renewable energy. Now, that number represents around one-tenth of all land in the country. The change comes from new regulations introduced by the Bureau of Land Management, which has chosen to prioritize the protection and restoration of natural habitats. This shift in policy is a dramatic change, as the Bureau of Land Management has, for decades, focused on leasing land to non-renewable and carbon-rich industries like oil and gas, especially under the Trump administration. Now, with the new regulations, land leases will be prioritized to companies pledging to restore, mitigate, or conserve land to balance out natural resource extraction. The change hasn't gone uncontested, though. Representatives of the fossil fuel industries have challenged the new land use plans, arguing that it's regulatory overreach, that it gets in the way of energy production investment, and have promised to take the matter to court. Lucky for America's natural environment, in line with the Biden administration's commitment for a greener country, the Bureau is standing its ground. Like much of the world, the United States is already feeling the impacts of climate change, with higher temperatures and rising sea levels. And the Bureau's decision is seen as a monumental step to stop further environmental damage. Next up, we move back to the medical sector, where a new vaccine can teach the immune system to fight deadly brain tumors within days. The immune system is the body's strongest line of defense, and now scientists working out of the University of Florida might have found a way to reprogram this system to respond to potential threats such as cancer. It's based on mRNA technology, which was also used in COVID-19 vaccines, and involves customizing each vaccine with a patient's own cells. It works by introducing a cluster of these cells to teach the immune system how to detect dangerous tumors. This method has proven to be much stronger than using single particles and can begin to take effect in just two days. The new vaccine was tested on dogs with terminal cancerous tumors with promising results. On average, it increased their lifespan from around two months to four and a half months. In human time, that's like two and a half years. And in follow-up testing on humans, there were similar results. The immune system almost instantly began fighting brain tumors aggressively. Both in the dog and human trials, the target was glioblastoma, a dangerously fast-moving brain cancer with a survival rate of just 6.9%. 
Researchers have noted that it's too early to know how much it might extend the lifespan of humans, and that it's not a magic bullet to cure cancer. However, it does offer an innovative new way to attack tumors, and could open the door for mRNA technology to be used against a range of different cancers and diseases as well. For our final story, let's pay off the intro. A new mega yacht has been unveiled with a surprising feature. It's the first in the world to be entirely powered by hydrogen. The world's richest and most famous travel in luxury. In the air, via private jets, and in the sea on a super yacht, the ultimate symbol of success. However, more and more, with the criticism of the gigantic carbon footprint left behind, even the wealthy are looking for alternatives. With the world's first hydrogen-powered mega-yacht debuting in Amsterdam last month, many may have found the solution. A regular mega-yacht can emit around 22,000 tons of carbon a year, which is more than two-thirds emitted by the Caribbean territory of Anguilla, which has a population of around 15,000 people. And with around-the-clock crew and onboard facilities, fuel is burning even when the ship isn't moving. That's what led the company FedShip to develop a hydrogen-based model. With hydrogen, power is generated by combining hydrogen and oxygen, causing a chemical reaction that produces electricity, as well as heat and water. However, because of how flammable the fuel is, hydrogen needs to be stored inside incredibly secure storage tanks. On board Project 821, as the mega yacht has been called, a total of four tons of hydrogen can be carried, enough to power the 7,200-ton heavy mega yacht and its full-time crew of 44 people. This fusion between luxury and clean fuel won't come cheap. The price tag is set to be around $630 million, and billionaire Bill Gates is rumored to have one already. I think I'll just stick with my economy class plane tickets for now, but hey, maybe one day. If you want to learn more about each of these stories, we've started to link all of our sources in the video description, thanks to feedback from you in our comments. We do our best to improve with each episode, so if you have any more feedback, please let us know in the comments below. We really read them all. Thank you for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next video.